hello hello thank you for joining me again happy new year to you all thanks for coming back to my channel we're gonna be um, I'm gonna do um, product images um, so well you know products come in all shapes and sizes this was one recently and it's a towel and okay that's that's a really good one I think because there's a number of things we can fix here to make this look like a product image that is suitable. So um, let's get cracking with this particular image. I'm going to skip the cutting part because the last thing I want to do is waste your life watching me cut something. So I do have other cutting videos that explain how that, how I, different various ways I go about doing all that. But here's here's the cut version. Now what? Just one thing that I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to make it a square image because uh, the width is over 3000, the height I'll make over 3000 as well and I'll center that. Okay, so now we have a square image. The reason why it's a square image, most product images are square images. It's, uh, there's a lot of uh, guidelines on things like Amazon that request that sort of thing. Now from up here, from the ruler, I click and drag down and it drags a guideline. I'm not sure I've covered these before, but they can be very handy because when you're working with these guidelines, uh, they do allow you to snap to click or click to snap, I should say. Um, and that will kind of um, help you align things a little bit better. Okay, so I've just done a rough rectangle around the outline of the um, of the towel but let's let's fix it first things first the angles of these are a little bit wrong there, there's some other things but let's fix the overall all right uh, I'm going to grab the um, perspective tool and fix that perspective so I'm going to drag this corner up a little bit more I'm going to try and kind of get them to match up to the guidelines a little bit better see how that's kind of down here and if I push that over this way here and that over here, and then that needs to go in a little bit. Okay. All right. Well, that's a bit more squarish, I should say. Um, there's a number of things. First thing I'm going to do, um, if you're really good with color, uh, you'll notice there's a yellow tinge to this, which can happen so often in photography. The easiest trick, especially for a photo that's supposed to be white, that's supposed to be black, or that's supposed to be gray, um, just remove the saturation. And then it just looks so much cleaner. Um, so I'm just going to push the saturation all the way down. That's a pretty fresh looking towel. Have a look at the difference. Up here, down here. Now it might seem subtle, but it's looking a lot cleaner if you really, really um, pay attention to that. So I'm going to, um, so there you go. It's a, it's a very fresh, clean towel that's straight out of the wash. Let's correct some of these things here. Um, if you ever deal with someone who's selling any product, everyone's a perfectionist with their own items. So um, I'm using the heel tool. I'm grabbing the the source from here and applying it here okay so that's there that's gone I'm gonna fix up fix that there fix that there that part all looks fine here it looks fine a little bit can be fixed here. You got to be careful when you're healing um, in, tr in tr adjacent to transparent areas because it will bring over some of that transparency in into the destination. Whereas the clone tool doesn't do that, so sometimes it's better to use the clone tool for those. Um, all right. Um, I'm going to do some more work on this. Now I'm going to correct some of the folds in all of this. However, um, I don't want to touch the edges anymore because I've just worked on them. So I'm just going to uh, do a soft brush. I'm going to 
well, I'm going to do a soft selection, I should say. And let's make it about 15. Select all of that. And then I can do the same. So I'll, I'll start with this side first, but um, I just copied and pasted it onto its own layer just then. Um, so control V and then right, right click to new layer. But um, it's just a habit. I like to do that rather than just select something, keep everything on its own little layer that you modify. It helps you undo things. Um, all right, now the healing tool comes into good practice here, but we're going to, yep, that, that did the trick. Uh, actually, I'm going to grab the source from here where it's a bit cleaner. Uh, and because that's on a different layer, it's not going to like it as much, but you can heal across layers. People don't know this. You just got to select the source layer and work backwards. Okay. Fortunately, we're getting some of that. Oops. So a source and apply. Now I'm going to fix here as well. Hmm. I'm getting a little bit bothered by it. Let me fix this side first and then I can properly apply it. Now just do the areas that need doing, because if you do more than that, the more you play with it, the more chances of uh, really ruining the image. So just get the bits and pieces that you really need to. So that's looking a bit more, let's say ironed for, the, for lack of a better word there. And uh, let's do this side as well. So now that we've got that, oops, select that, apply it over here, please. And go upwards. Apply here as well. Excellent. So the difference between healing tool and clone tool, the healing tool can grab the texture, but maintain from, from the source, but maintain the color. So if you have deeper tones, it will maintain those. If you have lighter tones, it will maintain those. What are those two spots there? And that. And that. Okay. Look, that's looking um, a, a lot better, but I still think we can get rid of this fold here. Oops, let's try that again. Okay, wait for the computer to catch up. Okay, I'm not going to spend forever on it, but you can see what I'm doing. Um, okay, now uh, we let's. I'm just going to flatten that for a little second. Um, you can fix these if you want. Leaving a little bit of them might actually help you because it will help a product look real, but. So I'm usually, so I'm just going to quickly go over, over these. 
my thing my finger uh, my left hand is on the control Z button uh, just to quickly undo things um, we're always undoing things that we're not happy with see just constantly undoing it's just the thing you do okay all right so I've removed a lot of those um, jagged lines from there um, one of the other things I can do is I can drag it sorry drag a guideline and try to straighten it up like I have with everything else um, so I'm going to grab the warp tool this warp tool get a decent sized brush I think the bigger the better in this in this particular case because we want to okay there there and this side needs to come out okay there and there okay that is better and I'm gonna um, push that up so that it is not I want to push this side in as well so that it maintains a more square aspect good I'm using control and mouse wheel by the way that's how I kind of zoom in and out and do all those sorts of things okay now this little bit here on the end okay good we have ourselves a pretty good towel and you could spend a little bit more time on it however um, th there are a couple of final things we always leave the um, colors to the end um, I know I desaturated from the beginning but that was and that was necessary um, let's work with um, the brightness right now I'll go brighter brighter well that's suddenly starting to look a lot cleaner isn't it as a towel look at this brighter people will ask why do you sometimes go brighter and why do you sometimes go uh, because there's a number of options levels can do it too you can grab the middle uh, layer and kind of brighten it up um, the, 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 the middle one here the middle triangle pulling it to the left will brighten things up it will maintain because these triangles on the end uh, remain where they. It will maintain um, the the dark areas, and I kind of wanted to lighten the whole thing up. If you want to lighten the entire image up without keeping the darkest parts there, then go with uh, brightness. I'll show you what it does. I've just done brightness all the way up. If I go back to levels, look what it's done it's created this whole space here it's as if it's as if you move this further to the left which you can't do that um, in this you can, I can't push this out anymore but it's as if I did that and it creates a whole now if I went darker it would have created that space on the right hand side of this okay so that is looking like a pretty good tell now uh, I'm, I can remove the guidelines. I'm going to remove a guideline from there, there, there. By the way, I've, I've just got to select the uh, move tool, and if I hold control, if I go over and hold, sorry, shift, it turns to red. Then I can just grab it and move it away. All right. I'm going to create a new layer at the back called, well, just just a white layer. Now, of course, if you end up with this, you can't really see it well. And Drop Shadow fixes this. Almost all product images have Drop Shadow um, on a white background. So let's do that. Um, there's the Legacy Drop Shadow or the new one. The new one will give you a nice little preview. blur it a little bit more but make it darker see the the thing with the darkness is 
um, when I put a dark shadow around it. It helps the tail look even more white and even cleaner because it really adds a contrast between the white tail, the one that we widened and, and what it is. For, okay, so thank you very much for watching that. I'm gonna um, show you what the difference is. This is the original. And that's what we ended up with. It's almost like a different image. Who would have thought you could do that, but you can. So thank you for watching. Any questions, comments, please, uh, please feel free to leave a comment. Thank you so much again, and I'll see you next time.